Hey, it's Jeff Sauer here representing JeffLytics.com and Analytics Course. And I want to talk to you about the benchmarking reports in Google Analytics. Now, I've been running my Analytics Course for quite some time. I've been talking to students for years. And one of the big questions that people ask me about, if I look in our forums, it's about benchmarking. It's about the capabilities of Google Analytics benchmarking, what you can do, what you can't do, a few surprises here and there as to how do you get the most out of these benchmarking reports. Now this video is all about telling you what you can and can't do within the benchmarking feature in Google Analytics. It's pretty straightforward how you can get it turned on and how you can use the benchmarking feature, but there are some questions about the utility of the data you collect and where it's the most valuable and what you can do with everything that you create in Google Analytics with benchmarking. And so we're going to do a deep dive here into the benchmarking reports in Google Analytics and to share with you some insights that we've picked up over the years using Google Analytics and how you may be able to use these benchmarking reports for your own organization. So pay attention because we're going to get right into the Google Analytics benchmark reports. So let's talk about benchmarking in Google Analytics. Now this is the element of B for Google Analytics benchmarking. What we can do here is we can compare our website to similar competitors. How much traffic are we getting? Where is that traffic coming from? And even knowing what devices people use on our site as well as compared to our competitors. And the way that this works is that you use anonymous data to see if you are on track versus your competition. And when I say on track, I mean are you doing better or worse for each of the different traffic channels and compared to the different devices. Now this data can be very revealing about what's happening in your marketing environment especially if you have a big site. And it really does start with just a single button click. All you need to do is go into the admin section of your Google Analytics account on the account level and you check this box saying that you want to have benchmarking enabled. Now if you look here on this screenshot, it's grayed out. Now I don't have admin access on this account that I'm looking at. This is actually from the Google Analytics demo account from the Google Store. I don't have the ability to check that box, but somebody checked it for us so we're able to see this rich benchmarking data. Now if you go in here and you see that it's unchecked and you don't have the ability to check it, then you're going to want to talk to your account administrator to see if they can help you out with that. But for the most part, either you're an admin or somebody's already done this for you and you can get right into your benchmarking reports. So if you can't get access to it, let us know and we can tell you how you can get access to it. Otherwise, let your administrator know that you want to get into these benchmarking reports and you can even cite this video to show them why you want it and why this is going to be so important for your level of analysis. And if you stick around to the end of this video, I have a link to an awesome competitive analysis deck and presentation that I gave about how to do this, how to project your entire budget plus a bonus download. So make sure you stick around and check out that link at the end of this video. Now, what does it do for you when you do benchmarking? This is actually a question that Dave, who's an analytics course student, asked in our forums. He says, is there a way to filter out the types of web properties Google's comparing when I make a benchmark, perhaps by industry? Let's answer Dave's question by going into Google Analytics and showing the answer to that question as well as helping you understand how the benchmarking reports work. Okay, so here we are in Google Analytics. You notice we're under the audience reports and we are under benchmarking and we're looking at channels. And this is the standard view. This is the Google merchandise store. And we are choosing that they are going to be in the vertical industry of clothing accessories, basically because the Google merchandise store, you're buying Google clothing, t-shirts and stuff like that. And then I will see what we need to do for the size of daily sessions. But for now, I'm putting it at 500 to 999. And then I'm just leaving it throughout the entire world. Now, if we look here, we can see that this is actually probably going to be a little bit too high of traffic. So basically 277% means that we have chosen too few visits. So we're going to look at something that's more like 1,000 to 5,000 daily sessions and see how that compares. So we're comparing other websites that get 1,000 people to 5,000 people a day coming into the website. And so we look at it, okay, this is a little bit better. They're, they're trending above, but not too far above. And so basically we can see that they are getting more referrals than anybody else. They're getting more social and they're getting more organic search than their competition set. Yet they're doing poorly in things like paid search, display, email, and other advertising. So you can see where you're trending up and down. Now there's no conversion data in here, right? There's no conversion and data in there. So that means that it's really just telling us how many people come to the website from a traffic perspective, but we can still learn a lot from this data here. Now, if you want to read this report, 
put everything into context. And what I'm seeing here is that Google's getting more referrals that are resulting in traffic to their site than anybody else. Now, the reason why, and if you've watched any of our other videos about this, the reason why Google's getting more referral traffic is because the referrals and the people who are buying on the Google Merchandise Store are coming from YouTube.com, trying to buy YouTube merchandise. They're coming from Google.com, trying to buy Google merchandise. It's like fish in a barrel. These are people who are interested. They click on it. They say they want to buy merchandise. That's why they have so many referrals here. Now, the reason why I want to tell you that is because you need to put this data into context. And what that context tells us is that most people are not going to be able to recreate the level of referral success as an 800 pound gorilla like Google. And so you can take this either as an initiative, you can take it as a grain of salt, you can do whatever you want to, but you always want to take this data and you want to create some kind of narrative, some kind of story as to why this is happening. Social, well, Google has some pretty hefty social accounts. Maybe they're doing some social there. Organic search, well, it's Google. Maybe they have done some crazy stuff with their algorithm to start ranking for it. Either way, Google's over-trending in these areas. And as an analyst, as somebody who's looking at benchmarks, you should look at your own data and you should start to come up with a narrative as to why these things are happening and how they're happening. And that's exactly what we do when we look at the benchmarking reports. Now, the important thing to realize here is that this is pretty much governed by the inputs you choose above. Now, we're looking at clothing accessories, but if we choose just men's clothing, how does that change our index? How does that change where we're benchmarking? See, we're only 20% higher than men's clothing, and actually, we're trending higher on referrals, but that's gone up a little bit. We're not trending nearly as high, or organic search is not nearly as high. It's almost neutral. Notice how it's a more muted green. So basically, the more specific the category we choose, the more or less we might be trending towards the index. And so that's something you can pay attention to. You can see, okay, well, most men's clothing companies are spending more money on paid search than Google is. And so you can make those comparisons and you can see whether or not this data is useful or not. You can also change the number of daily sessions. Now notice if you go to 5,000 to 9,999, we're gonna see there's nobody in this area. So, so we're gonna go back to our 1,000. Now when we choose the 1,000, we can see that there are 39 web properties that are contributing to this benchmark. This is a number you're going to want to pay attention to because it helps you understand how many people are making up that benchmark. The more you have, the more confident you can be in these numbers. And so if you go to very specific niches, you're going to have fewer of these things. If you go to specific regions, you're going to have fewer and so on and so forth. So what I would say is that most people probably are going to want to compare to the area that they're located in. So I'm going to do so I'm going to look at just the United States here for men's clothing, 1,000 to 4,999, and you can see there's nothing in here. We actually don't have enough data, so the data gets filtered out. So we're either going to need to go more broad with what we're looking at here. We're going to go back to all clothing. So in this case, if we go more broad to all clothing, we still don't have any data in there. So you need to keep on playing with this and seeing what you can do in order to get the data that you're looking for in here. So notice that in clothing accessories, we have 2,120. So that gives us a lot of data to go on. So you're gonna play around with this and see what the numbers do and what they're gonna tell you and come up with your narrative for the way to use this information for the most good for your business, for your organization. Now there's two other reports that are in here. There's a location one, and you can see where you trend compared to other people in your region. So we can do this and see how the United States comes in. We can see how that works. We can look at, we can make a comparison between these different clothing areas. I don't find this to be too useful because most companies, most e-commerce stores or, or websites are really focused on a single region. So do we need to know how the comparison works out to other countries? Maybe, maybe not. If you do have a multinational site and you do want to make this comparison, it might be useful for you. I don't really use it very often at all. But finally, we can look at devices and we can see how we're trending compared to other devices that are out there. Now the Google Store very much over trends against desktop, but they are much lower against mobile. Now if you were to go to that website, you could see if that's the problem, why things are happening there. Now, another thing to consider is what is the context of how somebody comes to the site? Are they always on a computer? Are they on their mobile device? Do you even have a link to the store from the mobile device? Maybe your mobile website doesn't even have the link to the store. So obviously all this data, what you want to do is you want to look at it. You want to you know, look at the green, say, oh, this, this is important. Look at the red, say, oh, this is important as well on a negative basis. And then start to say, well, what, what really matters? What am I trying to understand from this data? What is it telling me? and then put it into the context of your own business. Don't just leave it here and just say, oh, we're 180% above. A robot can do that, right? A robot can say we're trending 180% above. Why? Why is that happening? Is it good? Is it bad? Is it neutral? Are you getting results out of this thing? 
Do you have a great desktop experience? Is that why? Answer those questions. To say that it's up 180% is total and complete BS. You need to take this data, you need to put context around it, and then you need to use that data in order to make it so that it's useful to your organization. These benchmarking reports, they exist so you can add value to your company, you can figure out where you're deficient or where you're more efficient, and then you can double down on things that are working and you can work to improve the things that are not working, or you can just say, you know what, it's not working and it's never gonna work, we're giving up on it, this doesn't really matter to us. You have the ability to do that. You have the ability to drive the direction you're going in, looking at these benchmarking reports. And actually, this is something that's a very big part of being an analyst. So I'm going a little bit heavy on this thing. I'm going a little bit more of a rant mode because I want you to know that this data is not something where you can say we're 180% above desktop compared to our competition. That is not real. That's not really analysis at all. That's just spitting out numbers. That's something that robots can do. What an analyst does is they figure out why. Why did this happen? And then how do we get more of it? Or how do we make sure that we keep our position in a leadership position? How do we make sure that we keep on staying above what everybody else is doing? How do we stay better than them? How do we stay better than the competition? So that's how you read these benchmarking reports. Hopefully you found this useful. Hopefully my rant didn't scare you off too much. I love this report, but I also can take these things with a grain of salt. And I also look at them skeptically to say, what is this telling me? And then how does it actually affect my business? So make sure that when you're looking at this, you do the same thing as well. So let's recap what we've learned in this video. One, setting up benchmarks is super easy. Number two, you have the ability to compare yourself to similar industries, similar website sizes, and different countries. But as you go through them, sometimes you're gonna find that there's no data in there and you have to broaden your scope in order to find the right information you're looking for. You're gonna find a sweet spot. I'm not gonna tell you exactly what your sweet spot's gonna be because I don't know your industry, I don't know your website, but make sure you play with these things, adjust the levers and see what you can get from it. You can benchmark your traffic channels, you can do locations and devices. I find that traffic channels is by far the most useful. Devices are the second most useful report and locations I don't really find very useful at all. Now this data is aggregated and it's very broad. We are not talking about absolutes. We are not talking about, hey, definitively, this is what's going on here. It's basically looking at aggregated data. And as you notice, if you do something and you, you get too specific with what you're looking at, Google's not gonna give you the data that you need. So basically, you need to stay broad in order to make sure you have a big enough data set to look at, but the more broad you are, the less insightful this data is. It's really just telling you a trend, it's not telling you exact data that you need. So what I recommend, is that you combine with specific data that's elsewhere from other tools and you create a more valuable analysis. Now, if you stick around for just a second here, I'm gonna show you exactly how you can do this because I've created a video on how you can combine data from different sources to do more valuable analysis. And finally, don't read too much into this data as the sole source of information. This is just one of many data sources that you need and alone, it really doesn't tell you much. It's when combined with other data that it becomes super useful for you. I'm gonna send you along now to something that's required viewing, and that is a article that we wrote at Jeffalytics about how to project your marketing budget. This is something that comes along with a YouTube video talking about how do we use the benchmark reports, how do we use other reports in order to get the data that you need, and then we also give you a downloadable spreadsheet you can use in order to project your marketing budget this year, next year, and well into the future. And while you're at it, make sure you join our free Google Analytics mini course at analyticscourse.net where we're gonna show you some insights and tips about how you can get better at mastering Google Analytics. And I look forward to sharing that with you inside of analyticscourse.net. Talk to you soon. Mm -hmm.